Oh, g'day champions. We've got another Messi here in Express 550. The complaint being that there's no pilot light. And they're 100% correct on that one. Now, I can see that there's current draw from the mains when I turn on the power, so I know the, uh, the amp's doing something. I'm seeing the typical heater inrush current that you'd expect to get. Uh, so, I dare say we've just got a blown pilot lamp. But, let's not count our chickens before they hatch. Let's just test it. All right, so just a quick test of the uh, pilot lamp to see its, uh, its resistance there, cold. And we've got about four ohms, which is about what I'd expect. So that bulb's good, we'll put it back in. Then have to put the cover back on. And we've still got no light, so the plot thickens, as it often does with Mesa amps. All right, so we're powered on. I can see this current draw from the heaters, uh, but none of the switching's working. There's no indicators uh, working at all. All right, champion. So this is the one where uh, I thought it was the uh, diode shorting out or going open circuit because the uh, they like to burn their traces. That's a different model. This one's actually got a uh, regulated uh, low voltage supply, and we've got 14.3 volts on the input, and we've got zero volts on the output, 0.1 volts. So uh, we've got a short, and it's going into um, short protection mode, or uh, it's failed. So at least they've mounted that one on the chassis instead of just on the board and just completely neglected its need for heat dissipation. However, I still have the feeling that's underrated and they haven't used any thermal paste and it's uh, expected to um, conduct heat through powder coating too, which is not great. So I can't remember off the top of my head uh, whether this one's got the first one or two valves that are DC heaters. Uh, looks like the first two... Yeah, first two. The first two valves are uh, running 12 volt mode and we have about 170 like we measured uh, on the chip itself, 170 volts DC. At least it's pretty easy to access on this one. We can just replace that for the moment. I want to put my meter in series with it and see how much current's actually being drawn. I got the feeling that the inrush current on those valves is killing that. Yeah, they may draw 300 milliamps when uh, they're up and running between the two of them, running in 12 volt mode, but... Um, They'd be punched in the face with a big inrush current there every time. And uh, so would the pilot light. It would present a pretty hefty load at switch on. Now, they do have overload protection, but um, maybe repeatedly over and over again. Not the great greatest way to uh, to use that reg little, poor little regulator. That's an L7812. This is an MC7812. Uh, that one's rated at 1 amp, this one's 1 1.5 amp, so installing this one will give it half a chance of surviving. Uh, I will, however, monitor the inrush peak uh, before we button this one up, and I will also put some heat uh, sink compound on that on that uh, interface with the chassis there to, to give it a better chance. You can see here that the contact patch hasn't been huge, and it's been uh, trying to go through the powder coat as well. I won't be removing the powder coat, but um, hopefully just a bit of paste will help and the higher current rating as well. Actually, you know what? That's an aluminium chassis. I was thinking it's steel, so we might be able to remove a bit of paint there, and that'll help it uh, interface a bit better. Because you can see down there where the uh, safety ground is, that they've put a little sticker on there when they've powder coated it, and um, that's not steel, that's actually alley in there. So we might strip back a bit of that powder coat in that area. That is a pretty thick coat, and that'll give it a better chance of uh, dissipating the heat to the aluminium chassis as well. All right, champions. So the new regulator is installed. Uh, so let's fire it up. I've got the fluke um, set here for peak or maximum uh, current on the on the M meter setting. So that's in series with the output of the regulator. So we'll see what the peak is. All right. So flicking her on. <laughs> okay. So we're only getting like not even 100 millivolts, uh, and she's going into current over current protect uh, so it's drawing 300 milliamps at less than uh, 100 millivolts so we've got a hard short somewhere there's always 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 more than one problem with a mess of champions they're a house built on sand they're a house of cards insert analogy here so literally anywhere in low voltage circuit there could be a shorted component. So uh, now we get the 6.5 digit multimeter out and we'll uh, track down where the lowest resistance is and that's likely to be where the short circuit is. But first we'll remove all the low resistance stuff. So the two, the first two valves and the uh, pilot light. So we've, uh, we've got half a chance of tracking down where the actual short circuit is. 
All right, the old tantalum strike again. So I had to take a gamble on this one and actually cut its lead because I couldn't lift the lead through the board after melting the solder. So that means there's probably a bit of a hook on the other end of the lead. So if we force it, you'd you'd end up losing that whole pad and you have to pull a board and reconstruct pads because you can see the shitty, typical shit messer uh, circuit board design, pathetic design, super thin traces, tiny pads, just designed to fail. Um, Year after year after decade after decade, but we're measuring a hard short across that tantalum there uh, with one lifted leg. And that's a 15 microfarad, probably 25 volts. Uh, so what I'll do is substitute that with a V-shape electrolytic axial. Uh, and then we'll fire the thing up and just check that everything else is working. Yeah, you can see that lead there. I had to sort of pull it and rotate it around and then... Pull it out uh, only when there was no resistance because uh, it had that kink at the end of the lead there that would have ripped that pads and the through hole plating straight out of that board. Uh, the very thin copper they use on these. These are not these are not high quality amplifiers. Nothing Messer makes is a high quality amplifier, unfortunately, despite the price. All right, we've cleared out those holes, ready for the new capacitor and cleaned up underneath uh, with a little bit of alcohol and a cotton bud just to get the uh, excess flux from working from the top off before we won't have access in there again once we install that cap because it's too tight. Because again, um, there's a big big chassis here that would be quite easy to make things not so squishy, but they jam everything really close together because mess is messer. All right, everything's reinstalled again. We've got V1 and V2 back in as well as a pilot light. I hope these connectors can handle the current uh, without limiting themselves, but let's put the current meter which is the right one on uh, max so we'll see what the peak is and the left will show the output voltage as we fire it up okay so it's charging a cap there it seems to be taking a long time to charge that cap and uh, she's not reaching the full voltage there so I don't know if that's my leads playing up could be could well be might be sensing uh, overcurrent and uh, not giving it the full full juice so something's still limiting. Probably just uh, not capable of producing the amount of current that's required of it. All right, so that's curious. Uh, taking out the uh, pilot light makes it go up to pretty much bang on 12 volts. So um, it doesn't like the pilot light being installed. But we have our channel switching back and we've got our lights on the front panel back. So that's good. All right, champions, I don't know what's going on with that uh, that 1.5 amp regulator, but it seems to not handle the load as much as the 1 amp regulator. So without diving into the specs, which I will do one day, but I haven't got time for that shit right now, I put the original chip back in there, and it's it's working correctly. So it was that tantalum that was dragging everything down, and now that original chip uh, has protected itself. It still will fight another day. So that was an MC7812A, uh, whereas I tried to use a... L7812C, which should be a 1.5 amp rated, whereas that one's a 1. Uh, a 1.0 amp rated. But something about the uh, the L series one, it was uh, detecting the inrush current and thinking it was a short circuit, and then going into short circuit protection and not recovering from that. So without diving deeply into the specs and figuring out what, why that was the case, I've just put the old one back in, and we're running with it. And uh, that new. Uh, electrolytic cap there is sort of the issues so it's back to its boxy sounding self i'll uh, see if the customer wants to do a full service here's some pretty crackly uh controls there and uh it seems to be running pretty damn cold uh, we're only pulling about 70 watts from the wall there for a pair of six l6s and all the relays and five preamp valves so you'd expect a little bit more current draw than that but um they do uh notoriously bias these things like at sometimes like 15 20 percent which is a bit crazy but I'll uh, get in touch with the customer, let him know if he uh, wants to uh, do a full service, we can do that. Otherwise, we'll put it back together and get it on our way. So uh, until the next one, take it easy, champions.